what's it gonna take? No, you can't. Was obviously it's based off all the chanting and the uh, Hitler-like um, sheep of Obama just yelling, "Yes, we can!" all the time, and like and so that's where it came. Obviously, the inspiration for that, and uh, I think I was just messing around the guitar, and I came up with that do 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 um, riff, um, and then uh, the rest of the song came pretty quick. I think within a couple hours. And then a lot of the lyrics came in the studio. Uh, Pale Horse was just one of those songs I was just messing around with, and I came up with the, the main riff. And then I think over a week or so, I came up with the verse. And I knew that I wanted to do kind of a, you know, arpeggiated acoustic, kind of Middle Eastern sounding uh, bridge to it. Ideas. They like, it came pr together pretty fast. I think I uh, wrote the song within a couple of days, and uh, obviously you know, the whole Muslim problem. Oh, well, Mexican Sam! Uh, I wrote right from the transition from Beer Blow, my band, around 2001. Uh, after 9/11, I started to get more political. I wanted to get more serious. So, um, but Mexican Man was more lighthearted song, and then it became Mexican Sam over the years. And I started talking more about the immigrant problem, the illegal immigrant problem, and uh, living in Southern California and Texas, and then having to deal with a lot of uh, uh, Chicanos and Mexican crime and on environment. So uh, a lot of people, we used to play that song live, and people would request it. My other band members weren't that into it, but uh, it just grew, and I'm, it was kind of on the back shelf for a while, and then I'm like, I, I can make a serious song out of this. So we decided to uh, put it on the America Wake album because it was really but, um, yeah, um, the CGCG CG thing came pretty fast. And I said, Mexican man, the fruit eats the beans right out of the can, works real hard, doesn't have a green card. My friend Henry, Henry was killed by a legal Mexican. He threw in the uh, doesn't pay taxes to the man. And I think it was slow riding. I forgot about it. I think a few months later I just threw in that, uh, that bridge and I had an idea to, like, put in that kind of mariachi ska beat to it. And then the chorus was like, I need a chorus. Well, CFG, it's pretty like La Bamba or standard for that type of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. And Joe, Joe Sixpack or Joe Wade, um, he, he does the drums on there, the percussion. There's not a snare drum, but there's, I thought it was pretty brilliant. He just adds the, uh, the bass drum with the uh, hi-hat. I thought it came out pretty good. He did a better job than I would, so I was glad that he was there for that. And originally, I wasn't going to put bass on the song. I was just going to keep it kind of cool. But then when I put the bass, I realized, wow, that it sounded pretty good. And, and a lot of that music does have a really um, noticeable bass line to it, so I'm glad it's there. And Obama, um, somewhere in the summer of... Uh, that 2008, I think it was just messing around. Uh, I think it was kind of inspired by the song, um, the radio, that the, the Doors song, L.A. Woman. You know, there's a lot of the A chord in there. I think that's what I was just messing around with. And then I started, it's not a copy, obviously, the song's very different. It has the C chord, and then uh, I guess you could say the bass is inspired by that song, but it's definitely different. It's not a ripoff. But, uh, yeah, um, came that song came pretty quick, and then immediately, uh, I think someone mentioned Obama, or the thing, Obama, I saw the bumper sticker, and I just started, Obama, Obama, and that, it was a pretty fun song, very, some very basic, just the same chord mostly, but a lot of changes. Nigga, please, um, um, I think that started out. Actually, Nigga Please was America Wake, I think. And then uh, I changed the lyrics to Nigga Please. Nigga Please was just an idea I had. never wrote the song, but I'm going to write a song called Nigga Please for years back in the early days. 
And, uh, yeah, and then I started wondering there was a lot of hypocrisy. Like, there was a T-shirt that says this this, this shirt could say nigger because it's black. Because, uh, ironically, obviously, we uh, the average black person drops the N-word uh, like 100 times a day, and there's no big deal. And white man says it's – well, obviously it's with the A, so I guess it's, you're allowed to say the politically correct nigger is nigga with an A. But, uh, yeah, I knew it would be a controversial song, but, uh, you know, a lot of black people like this song, and they come up to me, and they agree because they have to live with the uh, these other types of blacks that, uh, who are entitled to the criminal. And uh, if you're smart and you, enough to see in perspective, you'll know where the song is coming from. It's not really racist, or it's a race realism. And, uh, yeah, just listen to the lyrics. But yeah, it's just a base. It's the same three chords over and over again. Um, but uh, it works. And originally, Joe put on the drums for that too, and that uh, um, sounded pretty good. But it somehow it got erased, and I had to redo it. Um, but uh, he had some really good kind of honky tonk piano to it. They got lost too, but uh, whatever. You can hear that more in the live version. Future Man. Um, I think that was the, one of the last songs I wrote for the album at the because we needed another song. Um, because the Awake song is nine songs, but it's repeated twice, so kind of only had seven songs, or was it? Yeah, or eight. I wanted to have nine for a specific reason, but uh, symbolic. Uh, Future Man. I was just you know sick and tired of being around the New Age movement and everywhere and gurus and the whole thing since the 60s and the Beatles and Mar Harishi that I was exposed to and a lot of that they try to do the Indian Raga music mixed with the rock with one chord so I was kind of a satire of that um, kind of new age rock that was popular in the 60s and um, pretty much wrote that within I improvised and that's the song most of the guitar is just me sitting there in the Creor to see and then it just came out, and I was pretty happy with it. Pretty fun song. A lot of people like it. Um, it took longer to record because we had a lot of different things. You want to experiment with uh, so many different type of effects that we could use. We wanted to use a sitar, but that didn't work out. Um, but yeah, it look it works as a uh, as a parody of of the so-called spirit. Uh, New Age uh, rock and uh, it has a little country mixed with it, as you can tell with the tremolo and the, you know, the chords at the end and the way I sing it. Uh, America Wake, two versions, is. Uh, um, I think it was just me sitting down with an acoustic, and uh, I think that was another song, too, and I decided to put America Wake on there. And obviously, the whole idea. Uh, I know where the poster came from, but uh, um, I just wanted to start with an acoustic and end with a part two version. A little acoustic, and uh, it speaks for itself. But then the uh, the electronic version with all the montage of sounds, I think I worked hard on that. That took. I don't know, I think that was the longest. I think that actually took all day, or the whole two days to come up with all that different stuff and look for different sound bites, but I think it kind of comes out pretty good. Um, Cold Dead Hands is not on the demo because I wrote it in the studio when we recorded the album. We were just uh, I was jamming with uh, Rob and uh, Joe. No, no, I don't think Joe was there. Um, yeah, and I just kind of liked the, it was a different subject matter at first, and then I think I had a gun magazine sitting there or something, it just like, it popped in my head pretty spontaneously, like, oh, we need a gun, a pro-gun song, because that's related to, you know, you know, the gun issue with Obama and liberals taking our guns, so, yeah, we just jammed, and I improvised some of the lyrics, and then sat down and came up with it, but yeah, that's why it's not on the demo, it was just, wasn't planned at all, but uh, it's one of my favorite songs on the album. Um, most of the songs are written 
in 2008 around the election time with Obama and um, McCain um, season, and there are a lot of political things happening that were inspiring me. Um, but uh, most of the songs were written that year. I think uh, Mexican Sam was been written way before that, like 2001. But uh, there was no rehearsal for this album because I just me and I play mostly everything on the album except for uh, Joe plays a little percussion and then uh, Robert, the producer, co-producer, plays a little lead guitar, a little bass, but 80% of the album is me. And the songs weren't too complicated, so we didn't rehearse that. I just made this demo and I gave it to uh, Joe. And uh, Joe didn't have a lot of time or he probably would have played on every song. He only came in for a day. He was very talented. He's been on other albums. Um, yeah, so I gave it to them uh, like a week before so they could kind of get to learn to know the songs a little bit better before we just went in there. But uh, the songs were, the album came pretty fast. Um, on average, a song just took two days to record. And we would just, most of the, a lot of, some of the arrangements we just came up with on the spot. Like you would, we'd spend an hour recording and coming up with the drums, an hour or two at most. And uh, I would say 50%, I was a little bit lazy on the lyrics. I wrote a, probably 50% of the lyrics before I went into the studio. And we would, we record, spend a couple hours on the music, and then we would brainstorm. I mean, me, I did most of the lyrics for about an hour or two and come up with the lyrics. And by by day two, we'd have most most of the lyrics for the song. So vocals went pretty fast. I recorded most of it in two or three takes, if that, for the vocals. And it can, the drums took longest, but the bass went really fast, and the rhythm guitars but uh, it was spread over two days so the whole album took a couple of weeks and then to mix and it was rushed out um, the market, the small market independent label that I had it was only after the album was complete it was released within a couple of weeks uh, right on the election or inauguration day and my birthday so um, also uh, de uh Rattlesnake Studios is a studio in Desert Hot Springs, California. It's out in the desert near Palm Springs. And, uh, you know, that area is known for being very liberal and very gay. But um, Desert Hot Springs is a little different. It's got a lot more trans transplants from other the south and other places. But there's also a lot of, like, gangbangers and really nasty environment. But that's the kind of environment I wanted for the album. You know, they would fed my rage and my indignance. So, but it was a, it's a house on a, not a very populated street and kind of in, but anyway, uh, we had a good time there. <laughs> 